the chant just now, the world is swept away, it does not endure, it has nothing of its own. The word world here applies both to the world outside and to, and to the world of your experience. There's a lot of things in the world that we try to hold on to, but they're not really ours. And the more we try to hold on to them, the, the more we get harmed. The Buddha's image is of grass by the side of a river. You're being swept along by a flood, and there's grass on the side of the river, and some of the grass, when you hold on to it, just gets pulled away from the bank. Other grass has sharp blades that cut your skin. So if you're looking for safety in the world out there, there's not much that it has to offer. This is why we take refuge inside, developing the qualities we need right here, right now. Food for the mind, the sense of well-being that comes when you focus on the breath. And allow the breath to be comfortable. Think of the sensitive parts in your body and how the breath might nourish them. Just sometimes thinking of that as a possibility changes the way you breathe, changes the way you relate to the breath. Kind of align the sensitive spots with the breath. Keep them together. And they give energy to each other. And the mind can calm down. Because a lot of our antsiness about the world outside comes from the simple fact that we feel antsy inside. But if you feel soothed inside, then the world is not so much of an issue. Of course, it's not just the physical feeling of being soothed. You have to think in ways that are useful as well. This evening I was talking to an old woman who's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. She's still fairly lucid, but she's starting to get worried about some investments that have gone bad and a, an inheritance that looks like it's not going to come to her. And I had to tell her, using the words that John Fuang used in many similar cases, that, look, if it's really yours, it's going to come on its own. If it's not yours, why bother about it? Why think about it? And she found that comforting. I kept reminding her that it's our internal resources that are going to see us through. And so we've got to work on them. Because if your internal resources are in bad shape, your inside portfolio is pretty weak, then no matter how good your outside portfolio is going to be, you're going to suffer a lot. So you have to learn to think about what's really important in life and realize that the quality of the mind is your real treasure. Get your priorities straight. So the combination of having a comfortable way to be with yourself in the present moment, and ways of thinking that place the emphasis on what you're doing inside, on the internal goodness that you can develop. This is one of the good qualities of the Dharma. It reminds you that the things you can get by being dishonest outside are not worth it. And the really good things in life come from goodness inside. The Buddha talks about internal treasures. There's virtue, not harming others, a sense of shame, in other words, being ashamed at the idea that you would do something harmful, compunction, realizing that if anything that would cause harm, you just don't really want to have to inflict that harm on yourself or anybody, conviction, conviction in the principle of karma that your actions really do make a difference. Generosity, learning the Dharma, and discernment. All these things are goodness inside. And we develop them through the meditation and also through learning the Dharma, stocking ourselves inside with good things. So when things outside are lacking, we're not poor. We're wealthy with internal wealth. That makes us independent. I've been reading recently a biography of Talleyrand, who was a foreign minister in France under lots of governments, the revolutionary government, Napoleon, and then the, the Restoration. 
And he was a very clever man. He was able to maneuver his way around all kinds of difficult people in difficult situations. But he was constantly enslaved to these things. There were things that he wanted. He was able to get them, but the things he had to do in order to get what he wanted were not all of that inspiring. He had to play servant to some very, very outrageous people. And that's because he had desires for things that they had and they could offer him. And if you've got all your desires focused out in the world, then you become a servant to the world. But if your treasures are inside, you can be independent. One of the things that John Fuhrman would say repeatedly is, we're nobody's servant. We're practicing the Dharma of our own free will, and we're developing independence inside. But it comes from learning how to focus your desires, not in the treasures of the world, not in the things that they can offer, but your desire to train the mind. If you're a slave to your outside desires, okay, you're going to be a slave to other people. And things get warped that way. Your character gets warped. The things you say get warped. You got to have a sense of independence. That means focusing your desire on these qualities you can develop inside. In that case, whether things come or go in the world outside, they're just kind of waves washing against the shore of a really solid rock, stone foundation. The waves wash, but they don't make the foundation shake. Because as the Buddha said, everything in the world gets swept away. Even your body gets swept away, which is why you've got to focus on the mind. This is your real treasure. Or it's potentially your real treasure. It depends on developing these qualities inside, which is why we have to practice. Because otherwise it's like having a big trunk and you open it and all you're finding is dirty laundry and old garbage. In other words, qualities that could have been developed in something good, but you've just let them spoil. So look at your potentials inside. We all have these potentials. To be virtuous, generous, wise. And what you're doing right now is you meditate. It's one of the skills you need in order to develop those potentials. This as you stay with the breath. You have to keep reminding yourself to stay here, otherwise the mind's just going to go wander around and sniff at the flowers and look at the mountain outside. You've got to keep reminding yourself, you've got to stay here, stay here. And as you keep reminding yourself, that quality of mindfulness gets strengthened. Because that's what mindfulness is. It's a faculty of active memory, reminding yourself of what are the important things right now, what's the important thing to do. Then you have to develop your alertness. In other words, being really clear about what you're doing and the results you're getting. You develop a quality of ardency, that you really want to do this well. You're willing to sacrifice a lot of things because this is important. So simply staying with the breath, learning how to do it well, develops lots of good qualities in mind. It develops your discernment. You learn how to read your breath, what it can do for the body. And when this sense of well-being comes up, it requires discernment, one, not to go jumping onto the sense of pleasure and leaving the breath. And two, it requires, okay, once you've got that sense of pleasure, what do you do to keep it going? And then three, once you're keeping it going, what can you do to get the most out of it? How can you spread it around so the whole body feels saturated with pleasure? It's possible. You can do it. But it's something each of us has to figure out for ourselves. John Lee gives a lot of good pointers on how to think of the breath energy going through the body and bringing with it a sense of well-being, a sense of ease. But he just sketches out the broad outlines. It requires our own ingenuity and our own powers of observation in order to fill in the details. And often it's the details that make all the difference. But as you pay attention to the details, and that's how your discernment develops, you begin to see subtle things in the mind, see subtle things in the body you never noticed before. And you realize you've got potentials here inside. 
so that you can become independent. Because the world outside gets swept away, swept away. And as long as we're trying to hold on to things in the world, we're going to get swept away along with it. But if our treasures are inside, okay, the world can be swept away, but we're okay. And in being okay, we can be a, a mainstay for other people as well. Because as you get swept away, you start leaning, and when you start leaning, other people around you have to will begin to lean as well. But if you can stand upright, you show people this is what it means to be upright. And some people will pick up on a sense of that, and they'll appreciate that, and they'll be able to find some security in the fact that you're upright. So looking after yourself in this way is not a selfish thing. The Buddha's image is of two acrobats, one acrobat standing on the other's shoulders. Each of them has to look after his or her own sense of balance. And in doing so, it makes it easier for the other to stay balanced. So find this balance inside. Find a sense of security and solidity inside. You can make it out of the potentials you have. And that becomes your inner wealth, a source of independence, so that you're nobody's slave, not the slave of your defilements, not anybody's slave outside. Another image from the Buddha, two different elephants. There's the elephant who, in fighting for the king, uses his four feet, uses his hind feet, uses everything but his trunk. He holds his trunk back. And the elephant trainer says, oh, this elephant hasn't given his life to the king. Then there's the other elephant who uses everything, including his trunk. And the trainer knows, okay, this elephant has given his life to the king. And in the image, it's the first elephant who's praised as the good one. The second one is the one that the king would like, of course, but the first one is the one who has a sense of restraint. There are certain things it will not do, no matter how much the king wants it. And that's the image of a person who's practicing. There are things that you do for the world, but you do have your, your principles. You have a place to stand where you are solid. There are certain things you will simply not do because they're not worth doing. They're harmful. And no matter how, any, how much anybody tries to pay you, you're not going to do them. When you have that sense of principle inside, that sense of inner wealth, that's when you really are independent and when you can trust yourself. And other people will be able to trust you as well. 